this video may show images that some people may find upsetting. Images of ill hamsters will be shown. Watch at your own discretion. Hello, I am back with a super nerdy video for you guys today for Hammy School. And it's basically more in depth into hamster illnesses. So, and also, I think this is going to be my last video before Christmas, so Merry Christmas! Anyway, um, this does involve some scientific terminology, uh, not, not too bad, so you should be able to understand it, but let's get straight into it. So the first one I have got is sores inside legs. So I've got my little notes here and I've put, this occurs when metal wire hamster wheels are used. So if you have followed the hamster community for some time, you'll know that hamster wheels were metal and they've got bars, they're very dangerous and this can happen. It can also cause loss of limbs and broken limbs due to slipping and getting trapped in the gaps. The most recommended wheels are, this is a Trixie one, um, and also Hope's Healthy Treats are quite good as well. Hi pumpkin. And these plastic Trixie ones, they're huge, look at it compared to my head. I know I've got a pea head, but this is huge. So, hamster wheels should not have any gaps. They should be good for your hamster's feet, so like plastic, wooden with cork lining is even better. Um, yeah, so don't buy wheels with gaps in. Also, wheels should be, I think it's a minimum of 8 inches for dwarfs and 12 inches for Syrians. But I always recommend to go bigger because with wheels you can never be too big. Well, you can sometimes, but if your hamster can turn the thing, then it's fine. The next one is ringworm. So despite the name, ringworm is actually a fungal infection and not a parasite. It's caused by fungi called Trichophyton menta... <laughs> Trichophyton mentagrophytes. I think I've butchered that, but... But it can also be caused by... Trichopython simi, Microsporum canis, and Microsporum gypsium. This can occur with damp bedding, which is a suitable environment for fungi to grow and live. So always spot clean. Make sure you're getting out of that damp bedding because that can be a great environment for fungi to form. And you don't want your hamsters getting ringworm because you and other pets can also catch it because it is zoonotic. So the clinical signs are alopecia, which is hair loss, and dry skin with yellow flaky seborrhea. I think I butchered that as well. <laughs> the body and ear penne are affected and the condition is sometimes prude <laughs> the condition is sometimes prutic. Prutic? I, I can't speak. So as I mentioned, if your hamster has ringworm, they should be handled with gloves as ringworms and zoos. I can't speak today. They should be handled with gloves because ringworm is a zoonotic disease. It can be passed to and forth between animals and humans. The vet should prescribe you antifungal treatment and the kid should also be cleaned out fully to get rid of any remaining fungi because there's no point treating your hamster for it and then putting them back in and then getting it again. It's just a continuous cycle. The next one is demodicosis. Demodicosis. Demodicosis, that's it, demodicosis. This is a common problem which is an inflammation of hair follicles on the skin which involves the mites known as Demodex chryseti and Demodex aurati. The clinical signs involve alopecia, some papules 
and scaling of the skin. Um, it's best to visit your vet as soon as possible with all these conditions anyway, not, not just certain ones, but with all of them. Your vet will probably give you a topical treatment, seeing as it's mites, but I'm pretty sure Demodex live on us, like on us as well, like in our eyelashes. So everybody has them. I'm sure it's normal for animals to have them, but it's just like if they cause inflammation, so the topical treatment will like soothe the skin. Yes, that's right. We have mites living in our eyelashes. How do you feel about that? But it's not all bad because they eat the dry skin cells, which is great. We love that. Slay. The next one is Sarcotic Mange. Um, this is also known as scabies and it's caused by mites burrowing into the skin. The scientific name for it, for the mites, is, I'm going to butcher this, <laughs> Sarcopites scabii. <laughs> Clinical signs include hair loss around the face, which is pruteric, and due to this being a zoonotic disease, it is contagious to humans and other animals, so be sure to wear gloves when handling. Take your hamster to the vet for the correct treatment. There is a good chance that you will be given an oral medication for your hamster. Fleas. So I'm gonna butcher this. The scientific name. The scientific name is Satinocephalides. Butchered that. And it can be transmitted from animals to humans. So once again, this one's zoonotic. Common signs are itching and alopecia and sometimes even seeing the fleas. So this is quite common if you've got other animals in your household that go outside, like say cats or dogs, they bring them in the house to you and then you pass them on to your hamster. It's easily done. So take your hamster to the vet for treatment. They will most probably prescribe a topical treatment and also fully clean your hamster's enclosure out because, like I said with the other ones, like with the fungi, you don't want to be treating your hamster and putting it back in with the fleas. It's another continuous cycle. So I know it's stressful for the hamster, but you would need to deep clean. Also, if you do have other pets in the house, it would be very smart to put a defleeing treatment on them just in case because if they haven't got it they can still catch it if it transmits to you and then to them the next one is alopecia this is normally a symptom of other health problems this is just generalized hair <sighs> ah! this is just generalized hair loss which can be related to chronic renal failure or an endocrine neoplasm um, endocrine is your hormones, so like the endocrine system. <laughs> yeah. um, Cushing's disease and hypothyroidism can also cause hair loss and hair thinning. Alopecia can be associated with rubbing on the cage and other furnishings or an allergic reaction to bedding or food. Don't get this confused with scent glands though. These are little dark bulb patches on each side of the rump on Syrians and on the belly area on dwarfs. They can all... <sighs> they use these to mark their scents on their surroundings and they can sometimes lick them. Uh, that can cause hair loss in those areas. But it's nothing to be worried about because every hamster has scent glands. Males are more prominent than females, obviously, because they like to mark their territory, but it's completely normal, don't worry. As this is a symptom of many different health problems, the best idea is to take your hamster to the vet so that they can diagnose your hamster correctly and treat it correctly. The next one is pyoderma and abscesses. So, pyoderma is generally caused by Staphylococcus, I butchered that, 
aureus as a result of fighting or through abrasions in the skin. Abrasions can happen if there are unsafe items in the enclosure, but fighting should not happen no matter the species of hamster. They should all be kept alone. Hamsters are solitary animals. Maybe in the wild, dwarfs travel in colonies. But when they're in such a small space, because they're not out in the open, they will fight. Um, infected bite wounds will develop into abscesses. Other pathogens include, this is, I can't say this, Streptococcus SPP, ABD, Pasturella eutropica. Uh, these will normally be treated by antibiotics, so if you notice an abrasion or any abscesses on your hamster, please take them to the vet as soon as possible to, present, to prevent it from worsening. The next one is allergic dermatitis. I'm sure you're all familiar with what dermatitis is, but um, the allergens are usually food or bedding, however, some hamsters may be allergic to hair, cleaning supplies, perfumes, or even if you smoke in the same room as them, they could be allergic to that. The main point is to get to the bottom of what's caused the allergy. The first thing to do is put your hamster in a hospital cage and completely clean out the cage. Um, check what things you have in the room that the hamster could possibly be allergic to and check all the furnishings and toys from within the cage. It may be best to use a new bedding, just in case it is the bedding that is a problem. Um, also, take your hamster to the vet to prevent the problem from worsening. So now we're going into new territory. We're going to talk about pregnancy in hamsters. So this is how pregnancy works, <laughs> if you didn't already know. And then we're going to get into problems that may come with it. So I don't know if this video is going to get flagged because I am going to use correct terminology because we're not children here. We use correct terminology for body parts so let's do it. So before ovulation the female will have a thin clear discharge from her vulva. After mating this discharge becomes opaque, thick and sticky which is a copulary plug. A a pregnant female will develop a noticeable abdominal swelling by 9 to 10 days gestation. Um, gestation is basically the pregnancy term, if you didn't know. Um, females can mate from 12 weeks of age upwards, but some breeders prefer to wait 4 to 6 months. Talking of breeders, adopt, don't shop. Females come into estrus, which is heat, every four days, which can produce a strange smell. Some people say it smells like burning rubber. I don't know. I've, I've, um, I didn't notice that with my female hamster, but then again, I was nine. <laughs> Gestation normally lasts about 16 to 18 days in Syrians and 18 to 20 in Russians and 21 days in Chinese. From day 13, the female must not be handled and should be disturbed as little as possible. Only feed and change the water in this time. She should also be provided extra nesting material and extra protein such as egg. The book said cheese. I, I got some information from a book and it said cheese and I thought, hamsters can't have cheese and if we can it's not very healthy so before partition which is birth a female will become restless and have a bloody discharge from the vulva when birth soon follows this generally takes place at night the young are born hairless pink and with closed eyes and unlike other rodents they are born with incisor teeth. The female may eat or abandon her young if she's disturbed, if there isn't enough nesting or too little food and water. To prevent this happening, the female should not be disturbed for 10 days other than 
to provide fresh food and water. The young become third at five days of age and their eyes open around 10 days old. This is when they also start eating solid foods and nibbling at pieces the female brings back to the nest. The young must be separated from the female around three to four weeks old as she may start to attack them. The young must be sexed and separated from each other by six weeks old, otherwise they will start to interbreed. Uh, we don't want that. We don't like sweet home Alabama. Drink break. So these are the problems that can occur after partition. So fostering. So basically sometimes, especially with rescues, you get an abandoned litter. And they need a mum, so you try fostering them. So fostering is unsuccessful and the foster mother may eat her own young as well as the foster litter. The young are too immature to hand rear, so they will, how do I put it, come to a demise. The next one is mastitis. So this usually occurs when the young are 7 to 10 days old. The affected glands are warm and swollen with a hemorrhagic discharge. Often the female will eat her young. The treatment for this is antibiotics. Ovarian cysts. These are common in females that have not been bred. The clinical signs are a swollen abdomen and a bloody vaginal discharge. These cysts can contain as much as 2 mil of follicular fluid. These cysts can be drained by paracentesis or, oh no, ovariohysterectomy, I said that one right, can be performed. <laughs> so let's move on to urinary tract disorders. I'm looking at you, Reginald. You love scaring me, don't you? <laughs> so... Oh my god, why do I always pick the ones with the big names? <sighs> renal amyloidosis and chronic renal failure. Polydipsia, polyuria and harmaturia are seen. Geriatric hamsters also develop hair loss and sticky eyes. Amyloidosis may also affect the adrenal glands. Renal failure is a common sequel to sleep disease, also known as heat stroke, due to the dehydration caused. Reduction of dietary protein may help. Cooked rice may also be given. If concurrent infection is suspected, antibiotics can be given. And in cases of renal failure, following heat stroke, fluid replacement is very important and with any symptom of this, you must, take, you must take your hamster to the vets as it can be very serious, as can all of these. Now moving on to digestive system disorders. So going on to the mouth, we've got malocclusion, <laughs> I think that's how you say it, it sounded right. So malocclusion of the incisor teeth may occur if a tooth is broken by a fall or on a feeder and the remaining teeth will wear unevenly. Hamsters that gnaw on cage bars are likely to break teeth. So please ensure your hamster has the right setup. It's big enough. It's not bad if possible and they've got enough bedding and enough enrichment because you don't want them bar biting or monkey barring. Affected hamsters will have difficulty eating and become polydipsic. Vets will probably clip the teeth so that they are even. Teeth may break easier if your hamster's diet is low in calcium. So diet comes into this a lot. But dental carries. Dental caries are common and their presence is related to the amount of treats that are fed. High carb and acid diets cause an increased incidence of dental caries. Caries can progress to tooth root abscesses with associated salvation. 
facial swelling and anorexia. So anorexia isn't what it is in humans, it kind of is, but it's when your animal won't eat. It's not the animal wanting to be skinny, it's just it won't eat. Tooth extraction is possible to cure this. So hamster will probably go under general anaesthetic and have their teeth removed. And it's better than the pain they're suffering. It's better. Impaction. So this is when the cheek pouches can become impacted with sticky food. Think peanut butter for instance, that's why we don't feed it to them. Abscesses can also develop due to infection with Streptococcus SPP and Staphylococcus aureus. Both impaction and infection will present with clinical signs of salivation, anorexia and facial swelling. For the treatment, the vet may flush out the flans with water or an antibacterial preparation and antibiotics will be administered for abscesses. Another drink break. Excuse me. Oh my god, my straw's had it. The one everybody knows, wet tail. So it's also known as transmissible allele hyperplasia. It's a multifactorial disease associated with stresses such as weaning and changes in environment. So it's most commonly seen in younger hamsters. It's very rare in hamsters that aren't babies. The clinical signs are watery diarrhea, a hunched position, lethargy and anorexia and possible death from dehydration, which usually occurs within two to three days, sadly. So if you notice any symptoms, vets. Now, more severe cases are more unsuccessful in being treated, but like I just said, as soon as you see any signs, you must take your hamster to the vet to avoid death. Okay, so there's another one called impaction, but this is constipation. So this occurs if the hamster is fed dry food with no access to water, or if it ingests materials such as cotton wool or other artificial fibres, and lack of exercise can also contribute to this. So when I say this, I mean it. Do not buy those bedding things from pet shop that may not be named. You know what I mean, the fluffy bedding, because your hamster can either choke, get blockages and die, or get constipation and die. Mm. The clinical signs are abdominal discomfort, a swollen and discoloured abdomen, and a protruding anus. Take your hamster to the vets, and they may prescribe laxatives. Endoparasites. So endoparasites are the ones inside, exoparasites are the ones outside. So we're gonna learn about the creepy crawlers on the inside today. So I'm gonna butcher most of these anyway, so. <laughs> so the first one is Hymenolepis nana. This is also referred to as the dwarf tapeworm and although infestation in hamsters is common, usually there's no clinical signs. It may cause weight loss and may be responsible for constipation. The hooked ova are present in the faeces. So with any endoparasite, any parasite at all, any health condition, take your hamster to the vet. Next one is Cypathia ovulata. This is infestation with pinworm. It's common, but it's also asymptomatic, which means no clinical signs. The ova in the faeces are present and banana shaped. Take your hands to the vet. Now, respiratory infections. So, hamsters are 
I can't say that word, suspect, suspect I'm going to try for you guys, just pray for me. Hamsters are suspect, susceptible. Hamsters are susceptible to respiratory infections like other rodents. They can contract common colds and influenza viruses from humans and infection may lead to fatal pneumonia. The clinical signs are sneezing and with an ocular and nasal discharge. The hamster will be lethargic and sit hunched with a rough coat and half shut eyes. It will often sit in a corner and shiver, which is so cute but sad to me. So if it's like common cold flu, it should go away within five to seven days. During these days, just make sure you give supportive care. So give them extra water, extra warmth. Just make sure they're comfortable because it's not a very comfortable time for them. And I think that's all I've got. Oh my shit. I've been recording for 29 minutes. Anyway, yeah. Um, I hope this was informative. I hope you little geeks like this little medical science geeks I don't know what's wrong with me anyway um, this is probably the last time I see you before Christmas so I hope you have a very happy holidays no matter what you celebrate and um, hope you get everything you want I might see you before New Year so I'll not wish you happy New Year yet so yeah, um, thank you for watching, leave a big thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and happy holidays!